all right you guys welcome back to another minecraft tutorial on my channel and again i do apologize for background noise it's hot it's summer so my ac is blasting but in today's tutorial we are going to be building this house that's behind me i took inspiration from this house that i saw and i'll throw up right now on the screen on instagram and i immediately went to work on it in obviously minecraft and now i'm here to share the tutorial with you and without further ado, if you enjoy my tutorials, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe because I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year, ideally, but who knows, who knows. Additionally, I am going to build this of two ways. This one behind me is made out of diorite, regular diorite, smooth diorite, and calcite. And this next build that I'm going to do with you on camera, I'm going to be using mostly quartz and different quartz blocks. And we will still be using the identical amount of iron trapdoors as well as uh, deep slate blocks for the roof and detailing. But let's get straight into it. All right, so this will be the block palette that I'll be using for this second build. It'll be, like I said, different from that one because it won't have this messy type of look. Both of these builds are obviously okay you can pick whatever you'd like or however you'd like the build to look but i just wanted to give two different ideas that you could do with it and obviously i have all of the quartz blocks out for deep slate we're doing the tiles and the deep slates uh polished deep slate and then we have some cyan stained glass and then trap door and iron door for the regular details Starting off this build, we're going to go ahead and start with the front part, which includes the first window and the roof, as well as the door, of course. And to start off, it is going to be 11 blocks, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 11 blocks wide, and it's going to go up six blocks tall. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now right here, we're going to have a three gap block, whatever three block gap for the doorway. Then we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then a five block gap for a window. And then finally another pillar of six going right up like a so. Now for this upper part, we're gonna connect it all like a so until you have this uh, shape like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and start forming the upper roof half i guess i could say of this build i'm going to come over by two blocks and then place another block two of them like this then we're going to come over by one block and place it up one higher and then from here we're just going to go in by one block the tip of the roof is going to be right in the middle of this window here and it's exactly five blocks above the window so including this one one two three four five sorry that one was too high and then from here, we're gonna head back down. Well, first we're gonna come out one, and then down one, and then out and down until we connect it like that to the last pillar, until we have a shape like this. And this shape is necessary because it'll help you figure out the roof. If you don't have this down, it's a lot harder to figure out the roof, trust me, because I tried to do the roof freehand, and it took me ages to figure it out. Now, before we get into any more detailing in the roof work, we're gonna do this window here first. This window, this block isn't really necessary but the ones up here are. We're gonna frame it out like a so until we have a nice little frame like this. On the bottom here, we're gonna have half slabs instead of full blocks. And on the top, you can leave it like a full block or you could do a half slab. Or I went ahead and I did a little arch to it just so it had a little extra character to it, I guess I could say. Then for the blocks here, just to make it look like it's got a little more, I don't know, design to it, I put these iron trap doors as well as up here on the top. Then for the window itself, like I said, we're gonna be using this scion stained glass block, not a, pan a pane, but a real block. And it's gonna come back here by one block behind it so that we get this nice depth to it. Cause obviously you can't build it here because it's not gonna attach to these half slabs. So it's gotta be pushed back by one so you have the full window. And that's how you get your window done. Now for the entryway here, we're gonna have a half a slab go up. Then we're gonna have a full block go up. And then back here, we're gonna finally have our actual doorway. Let me grab the door. On the second full block, you're gonna put the door like a so. And we're gonna frame it with some polished deep slate and top it off with a polished deep slate stair. And again, go up one more time just to frame it off with the correct height. 
Then we're gonna fill the rest of this in so that you can't actually see the little air around it, because obviously that would be the interior of your house, with more quartz blocks, like that. Then on the top, we do have one more window that's going to be right here, only instead of having it pushed back with the deep slate, we're going to have the half slabs in line with the quartz. But still behind it, we're going to do another glass blocks, because again, it cannot connect to half slabs. I mean, you could do that. That definitely is a style, but not a style that I wanted to go with. Now, if you really wanted to make things fancy, you can make these three into pillars of a sort where on the top and the bottom parts you have the i forgot what it's called the chiseled quartz block and the connecting parts are actual quartz pillar blocks just so that you have a few more details added to your build and considering the fact that it won't be varied with diorite or anything else i mean you could if you wanted to it might be a good idea to do this with the actual quartz so that again like i said you do have more detail to look at even down here, we could connect it up with the quartz pillar and up above as well. So let me go ahead and put that in. Until we got something looking like this. Now before we get to the roof, I'm going to go ahead and come down here. And because it's a little cottagey type of thing, they tend to do these like more slopey triangle roofs slash have little things that are a little more interesting randomly put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this little three blocks total. So one block high and then two blocks high next to this pillar and followed up with some stairs just to give it a little extra slope to it. Like a so. And then one more block at the very end until you have this little edge. Now switching to the roof, we're gonna be using deep slate tiles instead of the polished deep slate. This first corner over here is pretty self-explanatory compared to all of my roofs. I'm going to come forward by one block and then to the side by one block, and that'll be a stair. And of course, upside down stair and stair, upside down stair and stair, upside down stair and stair, until right at the top we do a little upside down stair to meet it off, and a deep slate slab just to give it that rest of that angle. Now this other side is where things get more interesting, and honestly it's one of my favorite things about this build is the roof here, how it's got one side that's perfectly normal Minecraft roof and the other side that's a lot more of a slope to it. It definitely makes it a bit more interesting to see with the eyes, and I kind of want to build it in a survival world just because of how much I love it. But regardless, you want to come down to this corner pillar here, or I should say chiseled quartz block, come forward a block and out one with a stair just like we did up on that corner. Then from here, we're gonna go ahead and do an upside down stair. However, this is where things change. We're gonna do a half slab instead of a real stair on top. Bring the half slab over and up. Bring the half slab over and up. Again, over and up, over and up. And as you can see, we're kind of running out of the ways that it'll actually meet up. If we keep doing this over and up thing, it doesn't actually work out perfectly. So we're gonna back it up. So we're going to back it up until we reach this pillar right here that's right in between the window and the doorway. Now this is where things change. We're going to still do an over half slab like that. However, on top, instead of a half slab, we're going to do a stair. And now this is where we're going to switch it up to an upside down stair, a correct way up stair, an upside down stair, and finally one last correct way up stair, like a so. So again, you have this kind of like slow half slab creeping and then randomly it changes to a stair to meet up at the top but from the eye it just looks like it's got more of a curve to it which honestly helps give it that more of a cottagey type of wonderland foresty look in my opinion now continuing on the layout which i'm going to go ahead and put in first so that you know exactly how big this thing is going to be you want to come over to this side because this front entrance area sticks out now, including this column, we're going to go over three blocks. So one, two, and three. And then on this block, we're going to turn. And we're going to go at five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to come forward one and go out another five. And then we're going to go back one and go out another five until you have a little look like this. This middle section is going to be the fireplace. And these two other sections are going to be wall slash window. Now turning to face it like this, we're going to bring this out 11 spaces, including this, co this corner here. So one, two, until we have it like that. Now on the opposite end, we're going to bring this wall, including the column out 
14 blocks. So one, two, three, and that'll meet up perfectly with our, co our corner down there. Then we're gonna go ahead and connect these blocks, which will equal 26 blocks total. So basically we're doing a 26 by 14 rectangular house. However, the rectangle itself is pretty small. And on this side, instead of being 14, it'll be 11 just because we knocked it back by those three blocks there. And the main reason as to why this house seems to be so small is because of the roof. I went ahead and I based everything on the roof and I didn't want to actually have the roof extend out more than how it should be based off of this curvature. So based off of this curvature, as you can see with this one I've already built over here, it comes up and then when you turn it and to follow this main wall here, it eventually comes up into a peak like so on this side. And I didn't want to extend it out, even though you could if you wanted to bring it down lower and make it go out wider. But I just wanted to keep it as similar as possible to this arch as well, even though it'd be on the other side. Now for these two pushed back sections, we're gonna bring the corners up by five blocks until it's like a so. In the middle, we're gonna end up doing another window similar to this one, but just slightly different because it's smaller. And let me grab all these. So we're gonna come over to this one first. Of course, this block is not necessary, but I put it there to place things. We're gonna go ahead and frame it. And of course, we're doing a half slab in the bottom of where the glass is actually gonna go to give it a little more glass to see, I guess that you could say. Bring the deep slate all the way up to the top on both sides, and then another half slab in the middle. Of course, we're gonna have trap doors on the bottom and trap doors on the top like that. It'll be put up right against the roof, as you can see, I'll bring that over in just a second. Behind the slabs, we're gonna, of course, fill it in with our glass. And without further ado, let me go ahead and bring this around like a so. And without further ado, let me bring this around so that you see what it looks like with the roof above it. So from down here, you won't actually see sky through it. You'll see more roof tiles above it once I get it to that stage. However, right now, you can tell that you can just have this little lip of it, just a little extra white to kind of break up the steep slate on deep slate was essentially why the trapdoors are there. Now this exact same window is gonna go over here until you have something that looks like this. Now it's time to work on the fireplace, which that is actually too far out. <laughs> now for this fireplace, it's gonna go up nine blocks at first. So starting here, one, two. Again on both sides. Until we have this kind of area. <laughs> then we're gonna have a staircase going in to bring this in by one. I wanna go over one and up two more until we have a shape like this. And at the very top, we're gonna have some stairs connecting it all. At the very top, I already know it's gonna be a three by three area, so you can go ahead and put this in first if you'd like, or you can wait till you've actually brought it all the way up to the top. But it'll be a three by three area of stairs like that. And it should look something like this. Now starting on this block here, we're gonna have straight side up stairs four times, so two, three, and four, until it gives you this nice little shadowed effect like this. It's not exactly like the picture that I saw on Instagram, however, it was the best that I could do and that I liked the most out of the different designs I tried here. Now on the seventh block up, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is one block above this guy, we're gonna put trap doors surrounding it. Now trap doors, and this will be just until we actually hit the roof, I should say. So let me bring this roof out, just following around. So obviously we cannot put a trap door there because there will be a roof there. Same thing with the other side. There will be a, same thing with the other side. We're gonna have the roof continue on like this. And of course we'll have it again behind it as well. So let me just put that in place just so it's easier to tell. And then, of course, we're gonna bring the trap doors all the way around, like a so, although it's not necessary to actually have blocks there, because if we're gonna have these trap doors standing straight up, we can't actually have blocks there because they need to be powered. Now, you could put a redstone block here, and it would power the trap doors just fine. However, I don't really like that because then you see redstone through the holes in the trap door. So instead, I did levers, like a so, until they're standing up. 
And then to combat this, I went ahead and I, of course, finished off. So to combat the being able to see through the trap doors and see whatever block is behind it, I went ahead and I put a block directly behind it. Now in this build over here, there is a fireplace on the interior that is right here, meaning the smoke cannot go through this block, obviously, because it's just too high at that point in time, even with hay bales underneath it. However, I went ahead and I put another set of fire of campfires up here so that you could actually see it at the top part once it comes out. And I'll go ahead and show you that in just a second. Now, I said the top is a three by three. Well, this section here before we go in is three wide, but five or five by three instead. So we have the five and we're still gonna bring it back by three. So it's essentially gonna be like this. Of course, some of these might be destroyed with the placement of the roof. In fact, this will be destroyed right now because I'm already doing the roof wrong. This part of the roof should be the half slab tiles for a little bit. So doing the half slabs, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with the fireplace engine. So it should meet up like this, which is why it's a three by five, so that it goes back three into the actual tiles of the roof. And so technically this block isn't really necessary if you wanted to save some of your resources. However, it really does not matter that much, especially if you're doing the interior on this, because the interior on this is going to take a little bit of extra time and a lot of extra blocks to make it look nice. Now to finish this off, you can go ahead and just fill it all in with the smooth quartz or whatever block you're using. Come behind here as well. Now I kept this side flat, but I did add the smooth stairs on the sides completely to show that it goes, it gets brought in until we build up to the top just like a so. And at the top we have finally a full curved stair roof, like stair roof, stair topper, I guess you could say, just like that. Now if you wanted to, you could continue doing these smooth stairs. So they could be like this, just so that you have some additional decorative, de decoration, whatever you want to call it. You could even bring it all the way up to the top. And honestly, that does not look half bad, especially if you're going for a much more modern and polished look. Now on the very top, we're gonna to top it off with deep slate tiles as our roof. However, we're not gonna cover this middle part because we do wanna put a campfire in there. So let me grab one real quick. We're gonna drop down, this is the block that's right behind the levers, and put a campfire. Just one is necessary because there's just a one block hole at the top. And then you'll see eventually some nice little smoke coming out. If you wanted the smoke to go higher, you could just put a hay bale underneath it and then it would probably double up in height up there. Now for this side and back wall, all of these blocks are gonna be up seven blocks tall. At about that height, the whole way around. Now, since we're matching this roof line to this section over here, this left wall that's totally not built yet, as you can see, we're gonna go up to eight blocks in the corner, then nine, then 10, over three, back down to nine, back down to eight, and then back down to seven at the very end there. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and do it. So we're gonna go up one, over, up one, over, up one, over two, down one, over, down one, over, and here's where it gets a little tricky. But you can also kind of work it backwards since we have a partial roof built here. So we know that's gonna go up one, and that one cannot go up one because there's a half slab, so we're gonna have to wait and go up another one. So again, it's that two block, and then it's probably gonna be another two block like when we first built it until it connects like that. Now for these gaps here, like I said, we we're doing half slabs. Oh, this one actually should be a stair. We're doing a full block even though they're kind of wonky half slabs like a so. So you don't actually see those missing blocks from the quartz. And from here you can just go ahead and fill it in. The wall I mean. Now as you can see the roof itself is gonna come down like this and meet up with the corner over there. Meaning this block back here is not necessary which is why I said to bring these blocks up by seven high. However, if you wanted to, you could do an eighth one just so that you had a placeholder block to easily click on behind when you put the roof in place like that instead of having to connect it via the side of the stairs. But that's up to you. And then we continue to bring it up 
And of course, we always have it one out because I like the depth that it brings. Like that half slab on top and working our way down. Actually, that can stay in place like that. Until we got something like this. Of course, this doesn't have our upside down pretty stairs to give it that extra design. Now it does, and now you have a roof that matches the other half of the house, or the front, I should say. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and fill in this roof because that would take a lot of time. And I'm not gonna go ahead and show you other windows because the windows I did on the front are basically the same windows I did throughout the rest of the uh, exterior walls. So I'm just gonna hop over to the other original house and show you how I did those real quick. So as you can see, we did these roo these roofs, these <laughs> windows identical on the one over here. On the side though, I did the same as this upper little window, only I made it slightly taller. It's actually one, two, three, four, five blocks tall with half slabs on the top and bottom, but still push back one for the glass block. Now in this one, it actually connects with the glass that's part of this window, so it's a little weird looking from the inside, but from the exterior, it looks nice. Then in the middle here, so we have two blocks window, two blocks, four block window, because it's actually an even wall, two blocks again, and then another single window, and two blocks again. This one is a four block tall, four wide tall, sorry, four wide, four block wide window, five block tall window, geez, words, that we have framed with our iron trapdoors on top and bottom, and framed as well with full blocks of polished deep slate. The only thing is there's no half slabs at the bottom because I did not actually want to push this glass back any farther. And I figured we could have actually some that have glass in line with the deep slate to give it a little difference compared to the rest of the windows. This back doorway here, we have the same slope, so we have half a slab and then two full blocks of the deep slate, plus these blocks that come up three polished deep slate blocks and a half stair above it. Then I decided to throw in just a little glass block there to make it look like it had a built-in window, framed by, of course, polished deep slate blocks. And at the very top here to connect it to the exterior wall, I did this stair, half slab stair of polished deep slate bricks, just to make it look like it's kind of supporting the exterior wall a bit. So we go one block, three block exit, three block gap, one block window, which is five blocks tall, two block gap, basically wall. <laughs> then again, that same four by five window that we did on the side, another two block gap, another single wide, another single wide window, another three block gap, and then this one is identical to the front. Actually, this one's a little bigger, I should say. On this side here, this is identical to the front of the house that's on the right side of the door in terms of height because it's four blocks tall and five blocks wide. Now, because the walls over here are slightly taller technically, and on this side you could put in this little extra little window, but that's not possible here. So I didn't want to copy it identically, so I made this one actually five blocks tall and five blocks wide, and all I did was extend up and put the stair and slab and stair up one more block. So you see the full glass up here instead of having it covered by the stair and half slab, but I didn't move the glass up any higher because I didn't want to mess it up on the inside, which I'll show you in just a second. So instead you get this peek through of deep slate polished tiles above the glass, which in the long run, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So that's why I kept it that way. And of course, this is pretty much identical to the front. We have our five by four window and another single window right above it and another single window on the side like a cell. Now the interior, I did not actually finish, but I built enough that it looked decent, I should say. Let me hold a torch just because it's so dark. There it is, okay, and it gives a little light, not much. But you come in and like I said, you can see through this glass into the side window as well as this window and it really does not make much of a difference. I went ahead and I framed all the windows in here with deep slate or let them hit this upper floor here, which is birch wood, as well as over here, so you can see it's a little weird when you walk in, but at the same time, it doesn't matter too much. You could always remove this floor if you wanted to keep it a single story and throw in some easy skylights, which would add in quite a lot of light naturally, and I think I might do that when I build this in my whatever world I do. 
<laughs> and as you can see, all of them are framed with the deep slate. I did this outline of stripped birch logs and then sandstone in the middle to give it a little kind of rug feeling or a more grand feeling. And over here we did the fireplace. This is actually the exterior wall. And then that actually is it? Yes, it is. Ha <laughs> let's ignore that. <laughs> so that's the exterior wall, obviously. And then we have one full set of polished deep slate blocks. Then for the fireplace itself, we have half slabs, a full block and a half slab on either side. On the top here, we do have another block gap and then a full two full blocks, full blocks on the lining the top floor and a half slab just to give it a little bit more of an arch. But like I said, since we went ahead and blocked this off so that you could actually see, let me go over here. So you could see, see right here the lever, so you could actually see a block here instead of smoke coming up through it. We put a real block in the way and put another campfire on top to make it look like we actually have a real smoke coming out of the fireplace, even though we technically don't. Up above, I didn't do anything either. It's so dark up here. <laughs> but you could make this a second story if you wanted to. I think, like I said, I'll just make this a very open aired giant looking house and I'd keep this and throw in some skylights wherever I could. Probably the easiest on the side that has half slabs or even up here. Like that. And look at how much light that lets in just from these few little blocks that you punch out and you can put a full glass block in its place. But yeah, with that being said, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like, comment if you have anything you'd like to see me build in another video, and subscribe if you're new, because as always, I'm trying to hit a thousand subs. And anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one. Until then, bye guys.